Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Comic Book Burrito, where here I cherish bringing you the news with all my heart, no matter how many men, women, and children I have to kill to bring it. My name is Darian. <laughs> my, my name is Landon. <laughs> and today we have a plethora of stuff for you. We got Marvel. We got DC. Uh, I don't know if we have any games, but we'll see. Uh, we you some. name it. Oh, well, there we go. You name it. We got it. We'll talk about it. And here we go. Um, by the way, that was a joke from the Suicide Squad. We are murderers. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I didn't think you needed that little explanation there, but some people may. So, Landon, how has your week been? made a very interesting purchase this week? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> thought about, I thought about the idea you had the other day about, you know, Wanted to do a, you know what I'm saying? You have to, you know, some of us don't have the other thing the other has, so one of us reviews it. Uh-huh. And I decided, hey, I still got my PS3. And I love fighting games. So I decided to buy Mortal Kombat versus the DC Universe for my PlayStation 3. Oh, because I love that so much. I mean, I thought it was there a pretty go. good yeah, now while hey, he's I'm, reviewing that game on there, I'll be reviewing Book of Boba Fett once it finishes. Yeah, four I'm weeks, good. I think. Four weeks. Oh, I wonder when. <laughs> I I guess I'll start playing it this week, so I'll try my best to see if I can get a platinum, so I can give kind of a full idea of what this is. So yeah. maybe I'll review each episode of Book of Boba Fett leading up. I don't know. Thanks, but um, that's what you've been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, pretty, that's pretty much what about you yeah that's pretty much it we tried to do that as stream today um, <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah the disaster stream yeah oh, the God. disaster it was a test not really but uh, we tried to get on there and play some injustice in Marvel's Capcom Infinite and it completely failed so we're delaying that till this upcoming Thursday yeah. and um, I mean it's really yeah, about it embarrass ourselves for y'all <laughs> I am going to um, actually, I take back what I said about the Book of Boba Fett. That will not be my first video I do. I'm going to do one about the Injustice animated movie. Because I know you probably don't want to watch that one. Uh, yeah, not really. Well, I just, I want to read the comics first and then... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you the comics. Yeah, bring Monday. Okay. I'll bring you the first one. I'll bring you the first one. I'm going to have to carry out so much stuff on Monday. You think Spillman's supposed to bring me <laughs> a big old poster or something? <laughs> He gave me a poster mm-hmm. this past week. But anyway, we're getting off on tangents. There are people who are like, oh, give crap about your personal life. Just want to hear you talk about Moon Knight. We're going to talk about Moon Knight, ladies and gentlemen. It's just, just jealous we're getting some. <laughs> we got a Moon Knight trailer this past Monday. Thank the heavens. We got one. Or yes. should I say, thank Khonshu. We got one. Yeah, thank Khonshu. <laughs> thank you. And now we're going to talk about the first trailer for Moon Knight. Expectations going into this, probably none, but maybe some. Um, very. I'd say this was probably my most anticipated show of uh, Marvel this year. Yeah. Here, because uh, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. To, I'm excited to see. Is what if season two is supposed to come out uh, this year? Uh, stay tuned until later on the show. Ooh, okay. Uh, I know Secret, Secret Invasion was kind of a, eh, maybe, maybe not, but stay it looks tuned. now. <laughs> um, she, oh, the for She Hulk. Uh, oh, crap. What else is supposed to come out? I am Groot. Yes, I am Groot. The Star Wars, or not Star Wars. Oh my gosh. Uh, Star Wars Holiday Special. <laughs> Guardian. <laughs> the, the Life Day Special. Oh my gosh. The, Guard, the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Um, I don't know if those are really show. That's just like a little thing. But uh, yeah, he did I'll, say we have to 100% watch that before Guardians of the Galaxy 3. That's what James Gunn mm. said. Yes, which I, you know, I was, I was, I was watching going anyway. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to do it anyway. Um, but yeah, out of the Disney Plus Marvel things, this was my number one. I want to I want to bring up a topic that some people don't agree with, but I think, do you think the move to Disney Plus for Marvel was a good idea? What, like them doing shows? Yeah, like moving their stuff is starting to tell the more of the story on a platform that people have to pay for, though. But being able to yeah, tell their story. All right, some people yeah. don't like it. Some why, people why are like, the shows are pointless. It needs to go back to doing the movies all year. 
No, I mean, I, it, it sucks. It is it is pretty bad when the when the show isn't really your favorite, and you kind of have, you have to like sit through it all. Yeah, but we haven't had a horrible show like oh, that, really. But I don't understand. But if people are complaining about like payment and stuff, I mean, I don't see no different of paying like a movie ticket. That's true. Go see the movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't see no difference in that. And if it's all like, well, you know, I'm going to pay, you know, two months, <laughs> months, but, uh, you know, for the show, I'm like, okay, well, pay the month when the whole, when all the episodes are out and you have two months off and then you do it, you do it again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they wouldn't have to pay for like four months mm-hmm. or just, you know, depending on the way the shows come out, you know? Yeah. Um, speaking of these shows, let's get into this review, Moon Knight. Um, I was going into it very excited. I mean, I know less than your average person about Moon Knight. I know who he is. I know what his deal is. But like, I've never really read a Moon Knight comic. I've never seen him in anything other than like just hearing stuff about him. Mm, unfortunately, um, it is the same for me. But uh, I did just, I, I just got a friend. He's going to loan me some comics of his so I can, I can hopefully give y'all a better idea of if this is how things are supposed to be or not. Yeah. My first Dark Star Moon Knight was in uh, Web of Shadows. So I didn't know the whole identity uh, thing. Like, I, I didn't know any of that stuff. I just thought he was like, you know, what. <laughs> Uh, average person looking at Moon Knight would say, "Oh, he looks like Batman, mm-hmm. but Moon, you know." <laughs> but uh, Moon Knight is way, 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 way more than that. Yeah, and it yeah. seems like they're changing some stuff in the show, which I'll get into right now. Talking about this trailer, here we go. Our first introduction to Mark Spector or um, Stephen Grant, as where he, I guess his, we start, we see his personality for the most time being Stephen Grant. Um. Mm-hmm. He we our first introduction to him is to his issues with sleep and losing time. Spectre has dissociative identity disorder. It's a big part of his character and has him questioning reality constantly. We meet Stephen Grant right off. He's a bit suaver and richer in the comics, so it's going to be interesting to see how he's updated for the show because he looks very exhausted in the trailer. Yeah, he looks constantly tired. He, he I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of scared to say some stuff because I, me and again, we are says before, we're not Moon Knight experts at all. But tell, it, me, tell me, he I'm doesn't good. remind you a little bit of Arthur. Fleck, dude, I, I was exactly, I, I was exactly, I was, I was going to say that exact thing. I was nervous saying it, honestly, because it, it's just like his nerve, him like looking nervous constantly, and the way he talks, and sometimes sounds, it, it, it gives me a lot of Arthur, Arthur Fleck from uh, the Joker movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next important character you meet in the trailer is the Egyptian moon god Khonshu, who walks towards uh, Mark or slash Stephen or whatever, and then well, he's in the elevator. Uh, Khonshu is the the god who is responsible for Mark's transformation in Moon Knight. Yeah. Um, I'm reading this off a website, by the way. <laughs> Belloflostsouls.net. Their breakdown. Um, so let's see. He looks pretty cool, though. He, he looks freaking good. Cool. We, got, we got a little... We didn't see him fully, but we got a pretty good glimpse of, glimpse of him. <laughs> yeah. Um, that happens. He may or may not be a figment of Mark's imagination that he likes to torment. Likes to torment him. Khonshu gives Mark his powers and guides him as a voice inside his head. Um, then there's this mysterious voice on the old flip phone. The captions label her as Layla, which may be a new name for Moon Knight's longtime love interest, Marlene Alron. Alron. Alron? She's an art oh, historian, yeah. art historian, daughter of a famous Egyptologist and a skilled hypnotist. The show list may Callum, Callum what? Co. Callum, Callum Ali, and its cast. I'm betting this is who she's playing, or at least a version of her. Yeah, probably. Um, Snap. Yeah, I'm just. I know. I know for the girl, but like he said, you were mentioning earlier about it all being like in his head. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm really hoping that is kind of the big point of the show, of all of it being like a big mystery behind it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, let's see. So last up, Ethan Hawke, according to the captions, is Arthur Harrow. The name comes from the comics, but this, I don't, but this person says they don't think this is the same character as he only shows up once in the comics. 
Hmm. So he, they think he's, they're going to change it. They said, this is more than likely the Sun King, who is completely obsessed with Amun-Ra and has the ability to control fire. He has a bit of cult following, like in the trailer. He's an interesting pick and is a formidable foe. Can't wait to see how Hawk brings him to the screen. The trailer leaves out on s- several of Mark's other personalities, like Mr. Knight and Jake Lockley, who I'm sure we'll meet in due time. But it does close with its lead beating the crap out of something that's definitely not human and then jumping across the rooftops. Hello, Moon Knight. Well. Very, very interesting. Um, I'm going to read off the cast of Moon Knight. And then we'll get into this next little thing. Gotcha. Which is still connected to this. Yeah, um, so, so, you have, so you have Oscar Isaac as Moon Knight. Uh, Gaspard Uliel is Anton Mogart, who is um, Shat. Wait, what's his name? Who? Uh, the his sidekick, Moon Knight sidekick. What was his name? Oh, uh, Full Moon or something like that. No. I'm. You sure? Yeah. You sure? Full Moon. Hmm, uh, hold up. I want to keep saying I want to say Moon Knight, but I know it's not. Uh, not Moon Knight. Um, Shadow, Shadow Man. Man. Shadow Man, but I know it's not right. Uh. Who is he playing? Hang on. Are you sure? It, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's full moon. It's the guy that's in all black. Yeah, that's um. That's not full moon. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking now myself. <laughs> I feel like look how unprepared we are for this, man. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> Here's a picture. We're talking about, we're talking about Midnight Man. Midnight Man. Okay. Jeez, I can't believe we couldn't remember that. All right. Um, yeah, Gaspar Uliel's Anton Mogo, Midnight Man. Emily Van Camp as Sharon Carter. As confirmed, Sharon Carter will be in the show. Um, so the, the power broker, right? That's what she was called. They call it, that, that was her name in Falcon Red Soldier, right? They yes, it yes, 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 yes. Yes, it's perfect. Um, uh, Ethan Hawke is Arthur Harrow. And then May Callum, that name, um, who we could be playing a love <laughs> that, interest. That name. Oh um, Loic Mabanza playing Bushman. And Mark Ruffalo is the Hulk, apparently. Oh, Mark um, Ruffalo? I do remember rumors about that, that he was supposed to be a Moon Knight a while back. I think I reported on it. Hmm. Okay. So it'll be interesting. But yeah. And now let's get into the next part. Uh, the character who cannot remember who he was playing, the actor, Gaspard Yulio, has passed away. Um, the guy was, oh, what was he? I think he was 37. He was 37 when he died. Yeah, in a, in a skiing accident. I didn't look. He died in a skiing accident. Um, so there's like too much into what happened, but I, I hate, I mean, me, I don't mean you They said he it. collided with somebody and he died after, on the way to the hospital. What about the other person? I, I don't know. I didn't see anything about that. Um, <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, I I but, hate yeah, I do hate what happened. That is really bad. That's that's really sad. He was meant to be portraying, um, as I said, Midnight Man. Uh, he's in all six episodes of the show, and mm. um, seemed like he had a pretty prominent spot. But now, it looks like he won't be. Um, I don't know, after episode six, that'll be it. Um, mm. I mean, it's, I guess like, stuff like this happens. Like, I mean, you can't help it. You can't get around it so i mean i don't know much about the guy and i know probably by the time i watch the show i'm gonna see him and i'm like man this guy's awesome but Mm -hmm. um until i see it i don't know much about the actor but he's really really young and so we got condolences out to the family and friends and the whole cast and crew of moon knight who worked with this guy and Mm. uh yeah r.i.p um mm. yeah, very, much, right. very much very so. much mm-hmm. all right um now off of that and on that was the end of our moon night by the way let's go ahead and rate that moon night trailer um so if you uh, could rate it out of 10 i'll give it a nine okay um i give it an 8.5 because i loved everything in it except for the fact that it felt like it should have been called a teaser trailer, not an official trailer. Oh, 
Because it wasn't enough. That was like a tease, like a minute and 30 seconds. I'm wondering, and I was saying I was saying this to you one point. I'm wanting uh I'm I i do not want to sound like this guy, but like I want to see more Moon Knight because not because like oh well, I want action, I don't care about character building. I, I just that suit he is wearing looks so good. Well think think about this. Um Hawkeye, we didn't see his new suit until the very last episode. All right. We didn't see Wanda's new suit until the very last episode. And we didn't see um, Falcon Winter Soldier, the uh, Falcon's Captain America suit, to the very last episode. I think it's going to be the same with this. We're going to see that in the very last episode. Or at the beginning, and he'll have it. <laughs> well, let's just hope they show it. Because I, I'm Don't just show. hoping they show it for a good amount. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I, I really like the suit. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll see, though. Um, mm. All right. <laughs> Your rating was a nine. Mine was an 8.5. Hey, go, guys. Go check out that trailer. And that was our review of the Moon Knight trailer. Um, also have a synopsis for you right here, by the way. And a rumor that we could be getting two episodes on opening day of oh, the debut day of Moon Knight. Because um, that would make room for Book of, not Book of Boba Fett, the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, which is supposed to be coming out May 4th. And May 4th would be the day that the Moon Knight finale came on, if unless they do two episodes at first. So I see that I can see them doing that. Mm, okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let me go get this synopsis for you guys. Where's that? <clears throat> there we go. Here's your synopsis for Moon Knight. The series follows Stephen Grant, a mild-mannered gift shop employee who becomes plagued with blackouts and memories of another life. Stephen discovers he has dissociative identity disorder and shares a body with mercenary Mark Spector. As Stephen slash Mark's enemies converge upon them, they must navigate their complex identities while thrust into a deadly mystery among the powerful gods of Egypt. Hmm. Sign okay. <laughs> Sounds like Moon Knight. <laughs> From what I, know about, I know about Moon Knight. Take my monthly payment. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. But that was Moon Knight. All right. So they added a series of one shots to Disney Plus. Uh, Marvel one shot, for example, All Hail the King. Um, uh, the one with Trevor Slattery in prison. And it kind of sets up Shang-Chi just a little bit. Um, they just put out every one shot and now you have the consultant. I don't know. I haven't seen almost, I haven't seen any of these except for all hail the King. I may have seen the first part of team Thor, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, but they have the consultant. A funny thing happened on the way to Thor's hammer. Item 47, agent Carter, all hail the King and team Thor part one team Thor part two and team Daryl. Um, uh, team Thor, yeah. Now, Marvel said that Team Thor, all of that, plus the Team Daryl, are not canon to the MCU timeline. What is it then? <laughs> it's just like a little light thing. They just like a little one-off. They said it is not canon because you know well, Thor was doing do Thor Ragnarok during Civil War, not well. Why? Why? Why were? Well, why they do it now? Because they just why? did it back then, but now they've changed stuff. Oh, they retconned it. I see. Yeah, but it's, okay. it's, it's 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 multiverse, man. Uh, it's multiverse, man. Like you gotta just gotta get with it. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. All right. Yeah, but they got those one shots on there. You gotta check them out. I need to watch them. Mm-hmm. Um. Here we go. So this is when I was telling you to uh, hold off for a little bit on that what if and secret invasion stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> An update to the Marvel China website, which is where we first learned that Secret Invasion and What If Season 2 will be on our 2022 slate for this year. Um, They have removed Secret Invasion and What If Season 2 from the the lineup of movies and shows. Yeah. So we have no idea if these are coming out this year or not. More than likely, no. Because we already have four shows, I think. We have I Am Groot, um, Moon Knight, She Hulk, Miss Marvel, and that, yeah, that's the four shows. And mm-hmm. then you got your then the holiday special, but I don't know what they're counting if they're counting as anything. Um, yeah, uh, but then your movies you got, um, Doctor Strange, 
Black Panther and Thor. And then the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special probably count as a movie. Mm-hmm. So there's your four movies and your four shows like we had last year. So I think I think uh, Secret Invasion, what if season two will be next year? Yeah. And Loki season two next year. I do believe we're getting that. And I hope, I mean, that leaves one room for one more next year. And I'm hoping, hoping, hoping it's Armor Wars. Yeah, I I want I really want to see what that's about. It's about so I hope we're gonna I think we're gonna get like a whole like armor like war. <laughs> like a bunch of people in armor. Oh really? You think? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um yeah. I'm really excited though for I mean Marvel just, just give us whatever. I don't care. Just give me a thing. I want to show mm. about Morris from Shang Chi. I'll take that. Morris, you want to give me a <laughs> you want to give me a show about that old uh, Chinese man from Shang Chi that was in the village, Guangbo or whatever his name was. Guangbo, remember the one where she was like, "Oh, you see that Guangbo? That was tight or whatever." Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah I take a spin off. <laughs> I'll take whatever. I'll, give me. I'll take what. I'll take whatever. Right, we're just, living in a time. Imagine ten years ago, even though we were we were like very young ten years ago. But if mm. we weren't, and we were this age, and we had whatever movies were coming out then, The Dark Knight, and um, like whatever years ago, and um, Spider Man Three, yeah, Spider Man Three, and we were getting them so many years apart, and all this, and now today we're getting four movies and four shows a year. Yeah, and, that's starting and plus that's DC, yeah, and plus that's DC, Marvel. man. Man, we are spoiled. <laughs> um, apologies if you're a dog in the background, by the way. Uh, all right. Next piece of news. Um, uh, a- I don't know what I was hearing. Actually, I knew the news. I don't know what, I don't know what is next. What's next? Um, there's a movie getting ready to film next month. You know what this movie is? <sighs> don't tell me because I feel like I know. I know it's not Black Panther too. No, they don't. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, hold up, because I, I remember hearing something about it. Thank you. Five seconds. <laughs> Let's just use the rest of the podcast time. No, no, seriously, though, what is it? The Craven the Hunter film is set to film. That, next I knew month. it. I heard about that with um, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and now. This has got to be connected somehow to like the Morbius or the um, Venom stuff. Mm, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh, it man, is. Craven, this, need, this movie needs to be in the Raimi verse, man. In the, <laughs> oh, really? I I, think, I, I, think I, it does. I, I, I completely, completely it doesn't need, agree. It doesn't need to be in the MCU because we already had Aaron Taylor Johnson in there. Mm-hmm. I don't need him back. They keep, they, they, unless, they, unless they can just. I don't know, do something else. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm interested to see about that movie. Um, I don't know how they do a solo Craven movie. Spider Man had to show up at some point, right? You can do a solo uh, Craven movie, I think. Uh, it's just like I don't know how. It would I mean, I don't totally know what they could do, but I'm sure. I'm sure they have ideas. Is and um, I'm not smart enough. Yeah, if filming set for next month, then we'll be getting some information. Then probably some set photos next month. Mm-hmm. All right, let's look at this. Um, well, I'll save that for last section. Um, the Thor: Love and Thunder Super Bowl, uh, possibly. The Thor: Love and Thunder trailer is apparently finished and ready to release. Um, and normally. They release a trailer, a big trailer for a movie or whatever, at the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl is February second, which is only like two weeks away. Mm. Um, I believe that we are going to get the Thor: Love and Thunder trailer. Then, if the movie comes out in yeah. July, then we we got to be getting some stuff soon. Yeah, um, yeah, I I keep forgetting of when these movies will show up. Thor: Love and Thunder's July. Black Panther's November, hopefully. And uh, you know, Doctor Strange is in May, May sixth. Mm-hmm. Was it May second? Like May, s- May. It's May. It's whatever that Friday is in that first week of May. Yeah, I, I want to say it's May second, but who knows? It's May. It's May sixth. May second to Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I think we're getting that uh, Thor trailer. Damn it, man. I just went on the same rant, but like, get, give me all the Marvel trailers. Give me all the shows. I'll take whatever. Well, we're living a good life, man. If we didn't have any of this stuff, we would not be able to do this podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, very much. All right. So, next piece of news. Okay, apologies, everybody. Had a tiny bit of technical difficulties, but we're back now. And let's move on to this next piece of news because that's where we were. The final piece of Marvel news. We didn't have much this week. Um, we got a leaked Multiverse of Madness cast list. And this is going around the internet, right? And, you know, Landon sends it to me. I'd already seen it, but he sends it to me. And I'm quite curious about this, right? And it looks so great until I get to the bottom. And then I'm like, excuse me, but I'm going to read off this cast list to you and all the actors. Here we go. Oh, oh God. It's not even news. It's not even news. It's like, oh, this, my God. It, this is most likely fake, but I'll let you guys decide. If it's not, here's all the people dude, that are going to show think, up. Dude, dude, I think it's real. Man. I, think it's I real. don't. I think it's completely fake. And we'll find out. Here we go. <clears throat> Doctor Strange slash Strange Supreme slash Defender Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch. Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen. America Chavez, Sochi Gomez. Wong, played by Benedict Wong. Carl Mordo, played by Shawetel Ejafar. I finally learned how to say that. Doctor Stephen Strange, played by Peter Hooten, which I guess alternate mode, universe version. Wong, played by Clyde Kusatsu. Christine Palmer, Rachel McAdams, Clea Lake, Anne Marie Martin, Matt Murdock slash Daredevil, Ben Affleck, Hyperion, Henry Cavill, Reed Richards, Ian Griffud, Sue Storm, Jessica Alba, Johnny Storm, Chris Evans, Logan slash Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, X23, Rowan Blanchard, Jean Grey, Sophie Turner, Magneto, Ian McKellen, Professor Charles Xavier, Patrick Stewart, Charles Xavier, James McAvoy, Raven slash Mystique, Jennifer Lawrence, Emma Frost, January Jones, Hank slash Beast, Nicholas Holt, Storm, Halle Berry, Jubilation Lee slash Jubilee, Allison Court, and Marie slash Rogue, Lenore Zan. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to say Gambit's name, but Gambit, played by Chris Potter, and then Gambit again, played by Tony Daniels. Uh, Peter Maximoff slash Quicksilver slash Ralph Boner, played by Evan Peters. <laughs> Pietro Maximoff, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. Vision, Paul Bettany. Agnes slash Agatha Harkness, Catherine Hahn. Monica Rambo slash Captain Marvel, which is interesting. Tiana Paris. And here's where it gets a little sketchy. Jimmy Woo, Randall Park. Okay. Lawrence Larry Daly, Ben Stiller. Um, Lawrence Larry Daly. Played by Ben Stiller, was the main character of the popular movie franchise Night of the Museum. Dude, dude, it's multi. <laughs> dude, it is the multiverse of madness, what? man. It's, it's happening. What? It is happening. What? It's happening. <laughs> Why? <laughs> All right. It's happening. But let's skip on. Darcy Lewis, Cat Dennings, Billy Maximoff, Julian Hilliard, Tommy Maximoff, Jet Klein. Same ones from WandaVision. <laughs> Jesse Prescott. <laughs> Played by Debbie Ryan. Jesse. Dude, dude, the yeah. nanny from the show, dude, Disney Channel dude, show, dude, Jesse. Dude, Jesse and Ultimate Spider Man had a crossover one time. So this is not out of. This, this is completely weird. out of. <laughs> no, it's not. Dude, they literally. Dude, Jesse literally met Spider Man, Drake Bell. So it's not it's not out of question. I don't I don't believe it's going to happen. Peter Parker slash Spider Man, Tom Holland. And plus, there's something else down here, I don't think. Uh, Gwen Stacy, Sabrina Carpenter, Spider Gwen, Dove Cameron. That'd be interesting to see. Peter Parker slash Spider Man, Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker slash Spider Man, Toby Maguire. I doubt they'll be in it, but maybe. And Peter Parker slash Spider Man, Leonardo DiCaprio. What? Yeah. <laughs> Tony Stark slash Iron Man, Tom Cruise, which we did get a leaked picture of, and it looked like him. But I can't get for sure. But it looked like him. Oh my gosh, get out of here. Spillman believe- even said it looks like him. Well, y- y'all believe that, y'all, but y'all don't believe Jesse Prescott or Lawrence Larry. There's a Tom Cruise in a mocap suit, yeah. supposedly yeah. taken on the Dark Strange set. Oh, God. Um, and then we got Hulk, Edward Norton, 
Hulk Lou Ferrigno, and Mahershala Ali as Blade. Um, I do want to uh, come out here and say real quick that it it is a pretty hot chance that uh, Toby Maguire is in Multiverse of Madness. Because same Raimi. Yeah, well, not because of that, but the Brazilian voice actor for Wanda, the, like who does the voice for her, mm-hmm. picture with the Brazilian actor for who does Toby Maguire, huh. and he and the guy and it was the same guy who was in he did it for No Way Home, so. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I give it a this. I mean, I think it's seventy five percent chance that this is real. <laughs> at least, at least three fourths of it is real. The other one fourth is not real. This whole thing is fake, obviously, but you know there are some things in here that could possibly happen in the movie. Yeah. But um, unless it's not like fake. Uh, who knows? Well, for example, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think we will see Blade. I think movie. I think I think it'll set up Blade. It'll like have a we'll have after credit scene maybe. I I don't think we'll I don't think we will see Blade at all. You know, not even like a tease in like an end credit scene. But uh, seeing um, well, according to this this see this might Icarus is, was supposed to return in this movie as well, and that was like a thing. I think I may have reported it last week, but I'm not sure. Um, but he's not listed on there, so that could be fake as well. But. Um, but I mean, I, I do see a high chance of a Jesse Prescott showing up. Um, Lawrence Larry Daly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, that's that's going to happen. You're going to laugh when it doesn't happen. The dumb dumb from Night yes. Museum. <laughs> it's, it's All right, coming in. He's coming in. I know. Dumb he's. dumb. You give us multiverse of madness. <laughs> yeah, All right. Pretty well. And he's the one that sets it off. He's the one that sets it off. <laughs> he does. He goes he's back to the museum. Crazy. Yes. The TVA takes him and he breaks up. Um, all right. But that was the Marvel. Ladies and gentlemen, I brought you the Marvel news. And now we're going to move on to the DC news. But first, let's talk about Peacemaker. Um, so spoilers for Peacemaker episode four. Um, what's the name? Wait, what's the name of what? Of Peacemaker episode four. <laughs> oh, apologies. Uh, it is called... <laughs> oh, you're making me say it? Is that, uh, is that what yeah, you're I want do? you to say it. I want to hear something. Oh, no, no. You know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is. You just don't. <laughs> the, the road less traveled, except R is replaced to CH. And so it makes it a funny joke. <laughs> you see? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, mm. <laughs> very, <laughs> oh my God. Very, very explicit uh, title. Yeah. Uh, but this is Peacemaker show. we're talking about. So, um, going into this, I mean, obviously you had high expectations, right? Oh, well, yes, yes. Um, very high because the first three I love, but, um, well, you know, from what I heard, you didn't like this one as much as all the other. Well, I, yes, this is my least favorite. Have you rewatched it though? Yes. Okay. I've watched it twice. Oh, it my dad did not watch it with my grandfather. Yes, to watch it. Yes. I, I, I promise. Uh, not for kids. Do not yes, watch not, it with your parents if you are kids. Um, Don't let them know that the comic book burrito told you to watch something not for kids. All right. Um, it's like <laughs> this is a very filler episode. You, okay, I felt that at certain points, but also certain points, I really felt like it was. I've talked about on the show. I'm a sucker for like diving into characters, like and like expanding well, I mean, everywhere. Everyone. everyone likes character. Everybody wants. To- yeah, I love some character development. Give me some of that. Yeah, but and that felt like that's all this episode really was, except for a few scenes where it kind of like amp some stuff up and set up other stuff. Honestly, the very end. Yeah, the very and end some very- other parts throughout it. I feel like uh, this whole white dragon thing, something's got to go down. Um. Because that, there's that whole explicit line when he sees this, not whole explicit, not explicit, but um, this the line where um, Vigilante goes, the armor's um, the arts messed up or something. He says, the armor's weakest where the cloth is. Why would they say that? Peacemaker, because he's going to have to fight his dad in the suit. And he's going to remember that. And he'd be like, oh, and they're going to go for the weak points. Yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, let's talk about episode four. So it opened. With the team post-morteming their takedown of Senator Goff and his family, the Peacemaker reports to Harcourt's slight dismay that he killed the butterfly he saw emerge from Goff's blasted open bean. 
Vigilante Fretzy may never stand up, ag- up again with a mauled pinky toe, and Economo straps a wounded judo master to the office sofa. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, big complaint number one. It did skip. Uh, Ari hates judo master, and he has a presence in the show. So, uh, <laughs> well, Ari, yeah, but he's like probably almost dead now. <laughs> but, he, but, you know, he gets shot. So, <laughs> he did give us a so, piece of information that's interesting. And I want to talk yeah, about it. Yeah. Um, but uh, in private, Mern chastises Peacemaker for freezing up on the pint-sized kid that ki- kid kills that Vigilante had to wind up doing, asking if his head is truly in this. Chris babbles on about not having a do- his dove insignia on the gun, but admits that while he has famously vowed to keep peace at any cost, no matter who he has to kill along the way, he wasn't going to ice the kids just because Mern said so. Mern hears him out, but makes him cl- makes it clear that their mission to Vans demands a expletive. <laughs> yeah. And he said, you're the only one I got. In this scene, he also mentions a character by the name of Matter Eater Lad. Uh, Matter Eater Lad is a superhero with the power to eat anything. And do you know what planet Matter Eater Lad resides from? I know it ain't a Wendy's, but what is uh, it? It's, the planet is called Bismol. Mm, and okay. it is a pink planet. And I'm pretty sure it's a Pepto-Bismol planet. And because it makes sense, <laughs> it's, yes, yes, it makes perfect. And um, some kind of disease went around that caused them all their food to rot or something, and so they learned just to eat everything on that planet. And that's how oh, he no. became matter eater lad. He eats all matter. That's his thing. He can eat people. Uh, uh, but in this case, he ate a whole Wendy's. <laughs> um, let's see, where was I? He also tasked Peacemaker with keeping Vigilante close. Now that he knows too much, let's talk about Vigilante for a second. What a, what a great character! <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, by far the best character. I would love. So you had the whole scene when he went to prison or whatever, um, towards the middle of the show, and they were like, "Someone's bailed you out," and it was showing everybody. It showed Mern sitting on the couch. I was sitting there like, mm-hmm. I thought it was Mern that bailed him out. And I was sitting there like, yeah. wait. I bet it was a Mandel Waller, and she's going to yeah. recruit him for Task Force X. No, it didn't happen. <laughs> it was hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dude, it, it, this, this episode le- leaves off on a pretty sad note. A bit. Oh yeah, I do agree. That was probably my favorite scene of the whole show so far. Oh yeah, yeah, very yeah. Literally, this whole episode for me was just filler. Up until obviously that you know the end part we'll get into in a minute of course but like the last part of the episode made it worth it yeah um because seeing vigilante kind of like because he's breaking down he's like he's like I was gonna kill him mm-hmm. and stuff um it, it, it's pretty cool to see see him do I, like I was. You know, I, I freaking I, I can't get I can't get mad of how much I love Vigilante. Apparently, uh, probably a lot of people do. Yeah, he's so, a very loved character. Mm, and um, yes, I heard yeah. James Gunn uh, with an interview with Kevin Smith. He put out they are hoping to do a season two of Peacemaker. Yes. Okay. So I want Bane to show up. See where this leaves off. I want Bane to show up in this, and he have to go against Peacemaker. Everybody, everybody's talking about that Gorilla Grodd, and that's got to be Gorilla Grodd. Come on, a butterfly yeah. gets in that. Gorilla's head? That's Gorilla Grodd. That's good. Oh. And that is Gorilla Grodd. Come on, man. I want to see... But, I mean, here, you want to You want to talk about the ending? Oh, I want to go ahead and get through the rest of this. Uh, oh, okay. So, he ta- yeah, I read that. At a bio, meanwhile, apologizes to Harcourt for not being able to pull the trigger on the bodyguard, explaining she's never shot, let alone killed anyone before. Harcourt makes clear, if you want to do this job, you can't bulk, ever. Yep. Dri- driving Peacemaker to Augie's, Adrian, a.k.a. Vigilante, thanks his BFF for letting the Senator torture him, so you were helping me because the b- become the best me I can be. Though, as Chris notes, his tone sounds decidedly miffed. Arriving at his dad's, Chris picks the front lock and finds the TV, but no one home. TV on, but no one home. He stops by the household army to grab some helmets, including one with x-ray vision, and is clocking his father's mounted white dragon costume, Adrian walks in. Chris Semi explains that the ranch-style house is an improbably vast quantum unfolding storage area, but Adrian is equally fixated on Chris, Chris's white supremacist father. Um, you know, on their way out, the old man taunts them. He mentions Joker, Riddler, uh, Mad Hatter, and they yeah. just they argue. 
Um, yeah. Let's see. Peacemaker finds out his dad's in prison, got framed. Um, He's not very happy about it. No, and he was going there, and Adebayo goes to stop him, and they have that whole thing. He was like, we know what your dad did, and he was like, he's still family, whatever. And he went in there. Mm-hmm. Um, which we do see what his dad made him do. And we also got a little thing of that in um, the Suicide Squad. We also got a hint of his... Uh, I don't know if it was at this part, but we have a hint of... Um, I don't know if this was already mentioned before in a uh, in something else. I just don't remember, his but brother? Uh, his brother. Yes. Yeah, well, that was first mentioned yeah, on this episode. Um, mm-hmm. I want to go back, though. In Suicide Squad, we're on the bus and going into the to find Gaius Greaves, the thinker, and they're getting ready to pull up to the that bar or whatever it was. And um, uh, Bloodsport starts talking about how his dad locked him in that crate of the starving rats for 24 hours or whatever. And mm-hmm. um, there was a scene that showed Peacemaker for one second. He like laughed, like, huh. and that's kind of like he's kind of laughing because I guess his dad did the same thing, you know. So yeah. kind of the same thing, but um, his mm-hmm. dad was like that too. Yeah. And we did, we learned also at the beginning when they first introduced him that his dad trained him to kill from a very young age. So yeah, yeah. You even see him. Uh, I guess what what would you call it? Uh, yeah, you see, uh, I don't, I can't remember where some of these parts are, but you, it, it's like this whole scene that shows him like stabbing someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right before it showed his brother. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then you go on, and um, he goes to talk his dad, and his dad was like, "When you came out of your mother, I should have slit your throat." I was like, "Jeez," <laughs> and then he goes like, "He was," he says, "You were a blob of flesh. I felt nothing for." Like what a yeah. horrible person! He said, "Your brother, I loved him to death, but you, I couldn't give whatever he said." I was like, he, "Awful person!" He, he, I know it's crazy. He's like, he's a pretty bad. He's an awful person. And, and I, and I know how last time we were talking about the show, I was like, "Yeah, you know, he's an awful person." But I, think, I still think he's funny. Or so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that no, was just like evil. He's like, it's like, man, like, what's the point of being such like such a terrible person to your son? And Chris but, suggests he's a. I'm not gonna say that. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't say that, can you? Oh, my uh, God. let's see. He, oh, his dad does say that he's no rat, but the first chance he gets, he's spilling everything, which means that he's a rat. Uh, yeah. So Adebayo tells Adrian that while Chris is a good man, his father's not, and that Chris is never happy when his father's around. And she said, I wish there was some way to make him go away. And planning the idea in Vigilante's head to cause commotion by the guard's lunch area, get himself heaved in a lockup alongside Augie, which I love that whole scene where he was in there like talking to him and just caused that huge fight and he's kicked their butts, man. Oh, yeah. You make it fun. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Well, yeah. we can't say what he says, but no. it, it is it is pretty fun. Yeah. All right, but I'm gonna start skipping around a little bit through this. Um. So here we go. Peacemaker finds Harcourt at the bar. Oh yeah. By the way, they fought Judo Master. Um, at a bio shot, her first ever shot, John Stomach. Yes. But not yes. before he could say Good. that the you the butterflies aren't what you think or something like that. Yes. Um, and then he got shot, so we didn't get to find that out. But we mm-hmm. might. Um, so Harcourt kind of um, reassures Adebayo and talks to her, which I really like that Har- Harcourt character. She's, like, pretty interesting. Yeah. Like, I don't know, something interesting yeah. about her. And there is a yeah, rumor, which I'll get to here in a little bit, um, a piece of news that I got about possibly her. <laughs> um, let's see here. Yep. Uh, Peacemaker finds Harcourt at the bar and this time asks her what his file said about what his dad did when he was a kid. With some hesitation, she reveals that said Chris was trained to kill at a very young age and his brother died under mysterious circumstances and you were involved. Returning yeah, home, he's involved now. Chris um, drinks and does some drugs to soothe his new emotional pain before laying down on the floor as a montage shows Adrian being released. Economist watching over Judo Master at a bio dodging a, a call from the wife. And a stone-faced Mern watching at home watching TV. And if you listen to the background, he's watching Lethal Weapon. And yes. that, it's like one of the funniest oh. scenes in that whole movie. And he didn't even laugh. Yeah. 
So uh, that yeah. that was that's already that's like I showed you how sad he is. And uh, this is listening to the song of uh, House of Pain. Oh, I love by, that. Uh, by who? Well, I can't remember the name. Um, I have it right here on my phone. House of Pain by uh, Faster Pussycats. There you go. Um, all right. Interspersed are flashbacks to his childhood where his dad hands him a blade to stab a tied up stranger. To Rick Flagg's death in the Suicide Squad, which I was like, man, y'all keep going back to this. It made me sad. Mm-hmm. Like, man, that was um, such a- I, I do have something to mention about Rick Flagg. Um, the thing on his shirt was the thing he had on his dashboard. Dude, his car. Oh my gosh. Okay. Because I thought, am I, was I the only one? I'm, I'm glad. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm not. I'm guessing not. Okay. Because I was one. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if, you know, <laughs> I don't want to sound stupid, but you think Rick Flagg is still alive or no? No. He got, we saw his heart get pierced. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, he got a freaking shot in the neck well, and stuff. But he only broke a bone. Yeah, I know. He only broke his bone. Yeah, which is weird. I don't know. Never mind. Never mind. But I just, I thought it was interesting. I wonder, I wonder, you think that's hinting toward, I mean, think it's hinting towards something, or you think it's just like a reference? I think he just keeps it to remind himself, like, or just like, remind himself of flag or something. Mm, okay. Um, here we go. Uh, and again, it was childhood where his brother collapses to the ground, seizing him with his mouth foaming, which looks absolutely like hard. I, I, I know you see a little kid. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. And the closing moments with the eagerly and the jarred up and possibly stoned butterfly creature that Peacemaker, in fact, kept quietly sidled up to a sad Chris. Harcourt arrives at the cop shop to drive Adrian, who drive home Adrian, who worries he made things worse by agitating Chris's dad. And he's going to put on the suit and they're going to attack. All right. That's going to happen. I, I'm already guessing. Oh, oh yeah, sure. it is. It is. Um, I'm so excited. And Adebayo finds in the golf files a business card for the same company as Butterfly Annie's work ID. Adebayo calls Mern with her good news and says he'll be right there real quick. Um, Though that it's a bottling company mm-hmm. is what it said on there. And I'm pretty sure in the trailers I see them at some kind of company with these workers or whatever. Yeah. So I think that'll be next episode. Um they did put out a promo for next week's episode. So but I haven't watched that yet. Yes. But I, I haven't watched it either. I get, I don't like watching it's a promo. It's like a it's like a what well, you watch a trailer for the next episode of a show or whatever. They play played after every show on TV. I don't I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to see nothing. <laughs> I don't want to see nothing. I'm sorry. Sorry. I it never shows I anything don't... good. It just shows like some of the actions going on. Yeah, I, I don't want to hear no jokes. Give you an idea of what you're gonna have next week. I don't want I don't want I don't want a something to look idea. forward to. Yeah, well I'll look forward to when the when the episode comes out. Oh, <laughs> Uh, me and my clip watching promo watching people are going to stay over here. Yeah, you're a horrible person. You might as well man. just not watch trailers. <laughs> yeah. I do watch it. Why? Well, it's the watch. same thing. No, I watch the trailer. Yeah, but that's a like promo two, and hours a trailer of, the same that's two hours of footage. <laughs> it's it's like, an hour of footage. <laughs> Yeah, for, no, it's, it's a it's a, a twenty five second promo for an hour. Of food. Tell a joke, and I and I want to I want to be surprised. I want to be surprised. Oh, I was, you know, I almost didn't watch the you know, I almost didn't watch the second trailer for No Way Home. You know, yeah. I you, and you regretted it. Literally, literally, the first trailer. I yeah, well, no, I watched it. You, yeah, yeah, you would have regretted it. I would not have regretted it. What are you talking about? You should have. That trailer was awesome. All yeah, right, yeah, it was good. Uh, so Adebayo um, called Mern, says he'll be right there after. We see he finishes eating a bowl of golden goo with his long purple butterfly tongue. Mm. I was right. <laughs> so, well, I think a lot of people were. So don't give yourself. Well, too much I was. Th- I didn't hear see anyone else talk about it except for me. So I was right. <laughs> Mern was a so, butterfly. I knew he was suspicious. He acted so strange all the time. That's why. That's why he has no emotion. But why is he going after the other butterflies? That's my question. Well, it's not what we think. You know. So, that's true. And mm-hmm. Bane shows up. <laughs> wait, yeah, wait, 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 uh, <laughs> wait. All right. Um, give your final recap on what you thought of episode four. I'll be right back. Uh-oh. Um, I know. As I said before, I thought this episode was very filler-like, but it doesn't mean it was bad at all. I just prefer... I don't really know what I was looking for in this episode, but it is. I mean, if I mean, it's still it's what you expect. It's still peacemaker. 
curious. Oh, okay. So, did you go out and literally describe a Pringles can? I had to go get my Bane mask. <sighs> because uh, Bane needs to show up in Peacemaker. He's not, Bane is not going to What would you oh. think Bane could be a Peacemaker? Bane is going to be a Peacemaker. <laughs> He's not going to be a Peacemaker. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Because it's, not, it's I, unrealistic. Are you going to have to listen? They know. I audition Bane, for Peacemaker. Bane, Bane you're not going to be Bane. a Peacemaker. Who's Bane? <laughs> Who's Bane? <laughs> um, oh, my God. I, <laughs> All right. Um... <laughs> I'm so, serious yeah. though. Bane's not gonna be. Bane is not gonna be in. Gorilla, I mean, gorilla that was the rumor before the show came out that Bane is gonna show up in the after credit really? scene episode uh, six. Is that really a rumor? Yeah, it was before the show came out. Oh, first, first I've heard of it. I okay. talked about it on the podcast. <laughs> oh really? Oh, sorry. I wasn't paying attention. I guess. It's, I, I don't. I don't care. Well, let's continue you're... on because we have some bigger news to talk about <sighs> after Peacemaker. Uh, so ratings, right? Mm-hmm. I, I give it a. Uh, ugh, They're not anywhere below what I a number that I'm thinking. <laughs> a number, I guess. I guess uh, ten. I'm guessing. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. It's not that good. Um, uh, here you're going to go first. I think I'm going to rate episode four of Peacemaker. Um, because for you, I'm going to bring Mana down. I think I'll give it. A, I think. I think I'll give it an a an eight point five. Half of the, okay. that point five is I, I enjoyed this episode a lot. Yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it a seven point five. That's what, that's still what, not I below. Did. That's not below. I was thinking if it was going to be below a seven, then I was going to buy. Well, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do below a seven. It was. It was still good. It was just very filler. And I was like, okay, mm, yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. I am. I am full agreement with you of uh, expanding character. Expanding character lore and everything. So I just, you know what I'm saying? So, mm. yeah. Um, all right. That was episode four of Peacemaker. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about episode five next week. Let's talk about Willem Dafoe. All right. Oh, I saw Willem Dafoe? For what? Let me find the screenshot. Let me find the screenshot. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. I know you're talking about him being on I forget to screenshot it. <laughs> well, I can. I know what it is. Uh, I'll just talk about it. No, I forgot. All right. So Willem Dafoe has come out and said he's fantasized about uh, making a movie, a sequel to The Joker, about him being an imposter Joker, going against um, trying to last popularity against the Joker that we had in the first Joker movie. Mm. And there's going to be like a clash of Jokers, kind of like a Joker war. Joker Civil War. Yes. <laughs> But I think it sounds really interesting. Like, Willem Dafoe is Joker? I mean, come on. I'm guessing this will be the closest we can get to him. Yeah, get I mean, he wants Willem it. Dafoe. I he, mean, everyone else he, wants I think, it. I, I think he should be playing Joker and Matt Reeves' thing, but yeah. Whatever. We don't know. We don't know what's happening with that. <laughs> I, I would like to know what's happening with that. Um, well, if Joker's going to be even in it, which I assume he will. Um, but yeah, think, Willem Dafoe has said it. he wants to be in it. I'm, we already know Joker 2 is in the works whenever that'll be. Very mm-hmm. soon. Uh, I do know that Joaquin Phoenix is not filming it right now, at least, because I saw a picture of him um, from this year, and he does not look like the way he did in Joker. He has well, yeah, he had, those, mm-hmm. he, had lo- he had to lose a bunch of weight for that movie. Yeah. Movie. But I wonder, I wonder if in this one... He doesn't really have to lose so much weight, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Didn't they say they're running a script for it, or it kind of got it got into like early production? uh, I think so. Writing script. It's been green. It got greenlit. I know that. Okay. Well, we know it's coming. We just don't know when, and I am very excited. Yeah. Very excited. Uh, I will be there. I saw the movie in theaters, obviously, and I will be. I I did too. Uh, there was a little kid in no, the theater. No. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You better know, no. My mother, the mother had to take him out. <laughs> I was laughing. I was like, oh my god. Took That's him crazy. out during the scene where the dude was smothering his mom. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, already. Yeah, um, we need to review yeah. Joker on Extra Beef. <sighs> we should. That'd be we fun. That we'll talk about that. 
Yeah. Um. All right. But that's all I got for that news. Let's move on. Um, cause this last piece of news that I have is something big. Um, James Gunn has confirmed that a character from Peacemaker will return in an upcoming DCEU movie. I reported last week there's a rumor that Harcourt was supposed to show up in Black Adam. Pretty sure that's what that'll be. Yeah. So um, that is confirmed that a character from the show will show up in a movie, mm-hmm. which is great. Yes. Um, yeah, it is very good. Mm-hmm. And all right, this isn't necessarily superhero related, but it is, and so we have to talk about it. Um, mm. The man uh, with the name of Joss Whedon. <laughs> oh my god, here we go, man! Oh, I'll just meet myself. Oh, I'll just meet myself. <laughs> Pretty much, like, I'm going to be talking for the next two hours about Joss. Oh. Oh <laughs> this is now god. turned into the comic book burrito, the Joss Whedon files. <laughs> Joss Whedon. <laughs> I know. Yeah. This episode, we talk movie. about the fall of 2002. That's good. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Can't, can't wait to hear this. So I'm going to read gonna, all of this. I'm in, I'm in full agreement with you. I just, I'm just, I'm just, just, I'm just going to leave it to you, honestly. All right. Um, I'm kind of afraid to. I, I, this is a very long article, so I don't want to read. What, 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 what if we get Josh Whedon on the show? Though? Um, I'm not going to be in the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to live on the show. You're going to like cuss him out and you're like, oh, hey, Josh, would you like to join us? No, I would never him. want him on the you show. You would? Yeah, I'll get, never. Him. I'll, I'll get him on here for us. Um, apologies. Let me just um, I'm trying to get a good one here. Um, he's, he, so much stuff happened, man. All I right. know. Uh, here we go. I'm going to click on this one. Everything we know about his uh, abuse controversy. All right. Joss Whedon's recent profile in New York Magazine's Vulture has rehashed the controversies the famed director has been facing the past few years. Whedon was known and well-respected for his work writing and directing shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Firefly, and movies like Marvel's The Avengers, and Avengers Age of Ultron, and obviously Justice League as well. Um, mm-hmm. It all came crashing after actors and staff he had worked with came forward with stories of abuse and mistreatment they dealt with while working on his sets. This is the first time he speaks out in regards to those allegations. This is his first time speaking out about it. Whedon Dude, was once. Is, how, how long ago was it? Is this like recent? Yes, yeah, like two days ago. Okay. Whedon was once venerated for creating characters that were seemingly feminist on the surface at a time when men dominated the action sci-fi worlds. For so long, fans viewed him as a feminist ally, but over the years, the people who worked with him and his ex-wife, Kai Cole, told a different story. Last year, Justice League star Ray Fisher came forward with accusations against the director, saying he created a toxic work environment on set, calling Whedon's mistreatment of the cast and crew gross, abusive, unprofessional. Buffy and Angel actress Charisma Carpenter followed, detailing her experience enduring mental and emotional abuse from Whedon. Since then, other actors, writers, and crew members, including Gal Gadot, which I found out is not Godot, it is Gadot, so I'm going to say it right from now on, and Michelle Treschenberg, you just op- like Josh Whedon for saying your name wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, Have opened up about what it was like working with the director. The director attempted to give his side of the story in the New York Mag piece, but it seemingly backfired after he downplayed some of the accusations and negative interactions people claimed to have had with him and offered no apology. Listen, mm. I can't wait for you to hear what this man said. Whedon's history of reportedly body shaming, making threats, and bullying have cast a shadow on his contributions and has shifted the way some people look at his previous work. Here's everything you need to know about the allegations against Whedon and everything that has happened since. So his ex-wife first. This happened in 2017. So so, so we're going by through like different people. All the different. Said, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to skip to something. Okay. But, okay. You made your ones. Uh, yeah. So um, his that. ex-wife talked about um, a lot of stuff. He always had a lot of female friends. He opened. She opened up about the secret affairs he had on the Buffy set. With all with actresses, coworkers, fans, and friends after the hit show ended. Mm-hmm. Um, I, man, this is absolutely crazy. Um, let's see. He said he would. He was constantly hit on people on the set. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, what is this one? He and all the stuff that people have said about him. He completely just like. He was like, oh, that never happened. She's lying out of her teeth. She didn't even apologize for any of it. But Gal Gadot or Ray Fisher, any of that stuff. Mm. 
It was so mm. awful. He like has so much stuff. Like if you guys want to read it, um, go to vulture.com. That's where the main mm. thing is called the undoing of Joss Whedon. This yeah. guy is now up to par with the likes of Bill Cosby or um, mm. another kind of like person that was very popular and a lot of stuff, but then I made yeah, some very, mis- very, very respected person. Yeah, made some mistakes. And now, now you got to make the conscious choice. Do I still watch this guy? St- like this guy is a, I don't, he's a piece of crap. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's probably safe to say we won't even really. Wa- now, I'm not saying like I choose not to. Like, I, just how, don't we'll I don't know if I can't anymore. not watch the first Avengers movie. <sighs> like I'm being honest. Like I, I may have to mm-hmm. watch it, but I'm not gonna like like the guy that made. Oh, it. you mean you mean like rewatch stuff? Yeah, okay. the movies that he. Made. I, I thought you meant like his future projects. No, so I'm like, no. I, mean, I think it's pretty. Obviously, I'm never gonna rewatch Justice League. Um, yeah, I watched. I mean, even though I hate Zack Snyder's version. I just, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Zack Snyder, but I said, I ain't the point right now. Yeah. No, no I. Uh, <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, that um, was, that was I, don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know if I could go that far of saying I, I, I won't watch uh, Avengers or Avengers Age of Ultron again. Mm-hmm. But because I because I really do like those movies, I always had good memories with them. But uh, if this guy somehow does still get work in the future, I'm oh, not. Right. I hope not. I'm not. Yeah, it, which I don't believe he will. <laughs> will no, of course. But uh, here, yeah, here, 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 all your other things. Yeah, uh, Whedon was also criticized in 2015 for Black Widow's storyline in Avengers: Age of Ultron, with some saying it was misogynistic. Whedon deleted his Twitter soon after that. In an interview with BuzzFeed, he denied that he left the social media app due to the criticism and said he had been attacked by militant feminists since he joined Twitter, so it didn't bother him. Every He, he said, quote, every breed of feminism is attacking every other breed because, God forbid, they should all band together and actually fight for the cause. In June 2017, a 2006 Wonder Woman script he wrote was leaked and people ripped him apart for his shallow interpretation of the superhero. Whedon responded, telling Variety, Quote, I don't know which parts people didn't like, but I went and reread the script after I heard there was a backlash. I think it's great. Mm. Uh, here's the Ray Fisher stuff. July 2020. Three years later. Actor Ray Fisher played Cyborg in Justice League and Batman and v Superman. A, well, this is when kind of the hashtag Snyder Cut. Like, what, yeah. like what, what was going on at the time? Was Snyder, Snyder Cut, Cut being kind of pushed right now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Because that came out in August, I want to believe. August of 2021. 2020. 2020. Is it really 2020? Holy crap. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, he he opened up about witnessing Whedon's abusive behavior toward the cast and crew in the Justice League set after he took over directing duties when Zack Snyder left the project after losing his daughter to suicide. Mm-hmm. Quote from Ray Fisher, Joss Whedon's sick onset treatment of the cast and crew of Justice League was gross, abusive, unprofessional, and completely unacceptable, Fisher wrote. He was enabled in many ways by Jeff Johns and John Berg. Accountability is better as over entertainment, is what he put. With the like little error, like whatever mm. that little mark is. Yes. That alligator <laughs> eating the other the big word. Yes. Um, all right. now, Fisher announced in January 2021 that he would not be returning as Cyborg in The Flash. He also took aim at DC Films President Walter Hamada, saying he is the most dangerous kind of enabler and that he could not work with him again. Mm. Fisher spoke to Forbes in October of 2020, sharing his experience with Whedon during the Justice League reshoots, saying that, quote, race was just one of the issues with the reshoot process, which he said included getting rid of Cyborg's backstory and digitally lightening Fisher's skin tone. I didn't even know that. That's yeah, uh, horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, what a piece of. I, I, I want to say, <laughs> I, I hate I was, this man. <laughs> I, I was going to tell you the other day, or I told you this the other day. I was going to play devil's advocate here for a minute. That no, I mean, no. I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not supporting anything he does. I'm just wondering because with Zach, because what they have, how much of the movie did they have finish? Uh, uh, like when they have like a quarter of it done. Yeah. With when, when when Zach was doing it. Yeah. Okay, I want to say then, that. But then um, was uh, Whedon came in and scrapped it all. Kept some scenes, but scrapped most of it. And mm, did something. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. Okay, I was wondering because I was I, I kept saying like, hey, maybe he was stressed, but I mean that's still no excuse to treat the 
the cast, you know, oh, terrible. Oh, here comes you know some stuff. Here comes some stuff about the new things Whedon said. Mm. Um, here we go. Uh, race was one of the issues, but well, all right. He added there were massive blowups, threats, coercion, taunting, unsafe work conditions, belittling, and gaslighting, like you wouldn't believe. Fisher also claimed that Whedon criticized Wonder Woman actor Pat director Patty Jenkins when Gal Gadot spoke out against changes made to her character. Whedon told Vulture, this is the new stuff, that he cut Cyborg's story in the film because it, quote, logically made no sense. And he said he brightened everything in post-production, not just the actor's skin. He called the actor's claims a, quote, malevolent force, adding, we're talking about a bad actor in both senses. Fisher was... Fisher responded to the article on Twitter, said, looks like Joss Whedon got to direct an endgame after all. He followed it by writing, rather than address all the lies and buffoonery today, I will be celebrating the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Tomorrow, the work continues. Um, and that was the Ray Fisher stuff that had happened. Yeah, okay. So James Marsters, who played Brainiac in um, Smallville, and he also mm-hmm. played um, in... Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. Yes. Um, James so he's, Marsters, already, he's already been familiar with Josh Whedon yeah. due to Buffy. Okay. Um, James Marsters claimed the director got physical with him. I don't know what this means. We're going to find out. Okay, that's what it means. So several stars that we can work with at the start of his career on those shows came forward in support of Fisher and shared their experiences with the director. James Marsters, who played the beloved vampire Spike on Buffy, said that Whedon once backed him into a wall and was seemingly upset because of how popular the actor's character had become among fans. Marsters appeared on the Inside of You podcast with Michael Rosenbaum. By the way, go check that out. That was a great podcast. Mm. Um, in July 2020 to tell the story he said I came along and I wasn't designed to be a romantic character but the audience reacted that way to it he said and I remember he backed me up against a wall one day and he was just like I don't care how popular you are kid you're dead you hear me dead dead and I was just like "Uh, you know it's your football man okay he said the director never apologized that's weird like why would he be so mad (laughs) Like, why is he so mad about it? That, that makes no sense. Who knows? Because he's taking the light away from the girls that he wants to be the focus of. Uh, I'm not going to go into all this stuff. Right I, here, I but... wouldn't care. I'd be like, heck yeah. I mean, if people are into him, take it. <laughs> but yeah. it's not the way he we knew. Um, he talks about that he, he wanted the costumes to be um, sexier um, mm. for the, the girls in the show and how it was completely unnecessary for the show, but it's all he talked about. He wanted him to have skirts and like do all kinds of stuff, but they mm-hmm. finally stopped it. But this uh, girl, I think it's a girl, might be a guy. It's the costume designer for the um, show. Whedon took out his frustrations on him. Apparently, they said, "Quote: I was like Joss. Let's let let's just get her dressed." He grabbed my arm and dug in his fingers until his fingernails had printed the skin. And I said, "You're hurting me." He refuted those claims to the publication, saying, "I don't believe that. I know I would get angry, but I was never physical with people." Um, now you, you also got to remember that Joss Whedon is a rich kid from birth. He's been rich mm. all his life. Has he really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Charisma Carpenter, who played, uh, who starred in Buffy and the Angel Show, had, she was mistreated, body shamed, and treated poorly while she was pregnant. Um, he would often be casually cruel to her, making ongoing passive aggressive threats to fire to fire her and calling her fat in front of her coworkers four months into her pregnancy. She also said that she, when she was pregnant, we didn't ask her if she was going to keep it and that he manipulatively weaponized her womanhood and faith against her. She added, what the heck? <laughs> he, he proceeded to attack my character, mock my religious beliefs, accuse me of sabotaging the show and then unceremoniously fired me the following season. Once I gave birth. Um, all the rest what of the, the world, all the rest of the Buffy crew spoke out about it. They said that they never want their name to be associated with Joss Whedon ever in their life. He's an abuser and he's awful. Mm. Um, there's a toxic environment. They said it was horrible. They're still processing it 20 years later. Um, people are supporting him, you know. Um, I'm trying to skip, skip him through most of this. And there's more girls saying that it was not appropriate. Gal Gadot opened up about her interactions with him, mm-hmm. which I think this is the last thing. Have we heard anything from? Uh, oh, here we I go. know we heard Just some vote. from both uh, Gal Gadot. Mm-hmm. That's what I'll read, and they got one more thing, and I'm done. Gal Gadot, uh, who plays Cyborg again? I'm so sorry. Ray Fisher. Mm-hmm. Have we heard anything from Ben Affleck? Ben Henry Affleck Cavill? said that it was um, messed up. Henry Cavill hasn't said anything. Henry Cavill hasn't said nothing. What about the uh, guy who plays Flash? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. I was just All right, here we go. May 2021. 
The Hollywood Reporter published a story from a source that said Whedon threatened Gal Gadot's career behind the scenes where they were working on the 2017's Justice League reshoots. Um, according to the source, Whedon pushed Gadot, Gadot to record lines she didn't like, even after she stated they were inconsistent with her Wonder Woman character. Gadot confirmed the report in May 2021. She said, quote, what I had with Joss basically is what he kind of threatened my career and said if I did something, he would make my career miserable. I handled it on the spot. Gadot said in an interview with Israeli outlet N12, according to translation THR. The actress opened up about the situation again when speaking to Elle for their Women in Hollywood issue in November of last year. She said she was shocked by how the director spoke to her on set and that she was, quote, was shaking trees as soon as it happened. And Warner Bros. quickly took action. She said, I must say that the heads of Warner Bros., they took care of it, she said, adding, going back to the sense of righteousness that I have, you're dizzy because you can't believe this was just said to you. And if he says it to me, then obviously he says it to many other people. Whedon mm-hmm. denied that he threatened Gadot's career. So, and this, so you know he's lying, because I don't think Gal Gadot's a, I don't think she'd lie. She's like a nice yeah, person. Yeah, I don't think she would. Yeah, I mean, oh, she lied. But same, I mean, same time, all these you, know, people, you, have, you have people out here that would lie, but, but then, you have I all mean, these people. You look, at, you look at the track record, you know what I'm saying? Not very good. It, 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 yeah, it doesn't really side with you, even even if it didn't even happen. It not saying it, I'm not saying it didn't. I'm saying if it didn't, oh, man, this is awful. It, then like. <laughs> He still did other things to people, so mm-hmm. it doesn't still it still wouldn't help the case either way. Uh, listen to this. All right, um, Whedon denied that he threatened Gadot's career, saying he jokingly told her that if she wanted to get rid of a scene in the film, she would have to quote tie him to a railroad track and do it over his dead body. What the? <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but like holy. All right. like, dude, he also told crazy. Vulture. The, um, where he did this article that then when I then when I was told that I had said something about her dead body and tying her to the railroad track, he told Vulture, I don't threaten people. Who does that? English is not our first language, and I tend to be annoyingly flowery in my speech. She did not agree, saying I understood perfectly. Carpenter fired back at Whedon's reaction on Twitter with a text post defending Gadot. His first thing coming back is English is not her first language, so she didn't understand me. What I want to. It, it's weird. It, it's, like, <laughs> it's like oddly unnecessary stuff. It exactly. Is, this was all complete like, silence. It was all going away, basically. I mean, nothing yeah. was being said. And then he comes and he says, could've, he, could've maybe, to, he could have maybe kept some of it. What is wrong with this man? All right. I got one last paragraph. And this is the new stuff. Um, after remaining silent following most of the allegations, Whedon's sit down interview with Vulture seemed to be his attempt at clearing his name. <laughs> Instead, yeah, judging much. by fans and his former colleagues' reactions, the interview backfired and brought attention back to the allegations. He, quote, he said, I'm terrified of every word that comes out of my mouth, he said during the interview, and reportedly excused himself to go to the restroom whenever a question made him uncomfortable. That fear wasn't enough for him to withhold certain information and thoughts that landed him in hot water once again. With Fisher, Carpenter, and Gadot all sharing their reactions. The profile also highlighted his upbringing as a child growing up on Manhattan's Upper West Side, gave insight into his peculiar relationship with his activist and feminist mother, and revealed that the director checked into an addiction treatment facility in Florida for a month, and that he has been in therapy for the last few years. That didn't really reveal that much about what was said in the interview, but if you guys want to read it, go check out um, Vulture.com, The Undoing of Joss Whedon. Um, it's absolutely insane. Long article, but it's very interesting. It, it is worth a read. It is worth a read. Yeah, so go check that out. But that's the Joss Whedon stuff going on. Um, I hope to never watch any of his movies ever, besides the ones that I like. But I'm not. I don't like him. I don't like him. I like Avengers. I like Marvel. I don't like Joss Whedon. Yeah, I'm, I've never um, watched Buffy or Angel. So and Firefly, I don't plan on it. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm just. Yeah, I'll be surprised. I mean, I don't think people would have to worry. It's like, well, you know, I'll I watch it in support of the actors. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm hoping. Well, I don't think he's going to get another yeah, job. I, either, I, I, honestly. I really doubt it. He's dug himself a deep hole now. Unless like 10 years from now, maybe something might come up awesome. if a student is desperate enough. True. Tough. Um, and. <sighs> Well, cl- clearly, it's weird. I don't know why he's very aggressive towards his actors because, as you can see, I mean, they usually he, come out with a good product. He comes out with a good. Pro- I've never seen Buffy the Vampire. Is it called Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Yeah. 
it's called. I've never seen that show, but I've seen Avengers, and that's a great movie. Yes. So clearly, something there with him. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't understand the whole why he has to treat people badly. I know you were saying before we started recording that there's this whole story of him and like some. Him Listen and like to this. Friend. Listen to this. I want you to hear this. Yeah. I just found this article on this Vulture website. I was reading the uh, looking at the undoing thing. <laughs> this is what he says. When he was a five. When he was five, a four-year-old boy, the son of a family friend, disappeared on his parents' property upstate. Eventually, his body was found. He had drowned in the pond. Years later, as a teenager, Whedon remembered he had called the boy over to the pond to play with him. After getting bored, he walked away, leaving the boy alone by the water. I didn't think it was my fault, Whedon said. I knew I was five, but it just doesn't, but it doesn't just disappear as a thought. It took him another 30 years, he said, before another thought dawned on him. Even after the incident, his parents never taught him to swim. There was no structure, he said. There was no safety. So he, like, was the cause of a boy dying, too. Yeah. But he was young, but, like, how still. How old was he, four? He was five. He was five. Well, that, I mean, that's different. That's, like, an accident. Yeah, but, like, but, still, that's the I mean, start. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe the start of craziness. I don't know, but I do This I do is hate such that. a good read. You guys need to sit down. It's a long read, though. It's very yeah, it's long. long, man. If you even want to hear crazy, I mean, this is Hollywood. And they, this is yeah. one guy. Lord knows... I mean, dude, there could be other people like this out there. You know what I'm saying? Never know. So, never know. Never, you know. If, I, if so, one day in the future we have an article like this with Kevin Feige, I'll be so upset. I hope not, though. I, I will lead. I will lead that one. <laughs> um, if that ever happens. Oh, Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon did some Agents of Shield stuff. Yeah. Well, see. No, he did. no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Okay. <laughs> but he, he did visit. He, so. But as you can see. Uh, you know, people who've made your movies could be freaking crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and that, I mean that's that's how I mean. Lord knows, I mean, I hate to bring it up, but uh, James, you know, remember that whole controversy with James Gunn? Mm-hmm. Yeah, huh? I do remember that. But that's yeah. that's different. That's I know it's different. I'm just saying there's there's always going to be controversy mm-hmm. with people, but and I know I think sometimes some stuff is blown out of proportion, but this this stuff here is very very serious. Yeah, this is crazy. Serious. Um, but um, yeah, he's just I don't know. I don't think he's a good person. <laughs> person, and let's just I think we we just need to hope that he doesn't get work anytime soon. Yeah, if he does. Um, um, I I pray for the actors and actresses. Mm-hmm. All right, so that is um, our Joss Whedon talk. Uh, like was, I said, yeah, yeah, like I said, go check out Vulture dot com. The Undoing of Joss Whedon, huge, huge, huge article. Mm-hmm. Very much worth the read if you're interested in reading more about this and this awful person. Um. I don't even like looking at his face. I have to like scroll down the page so I don't see his face. Hey, you crazy. Um, face. All right. But that's all my DC news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. That was, wow. That was uh, we running out of a little bit of time. So, um, yeah. I've got any gaming well, news to make it quick and then we'll get out of here. Yes. I got two. I got two. Um, K, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Let me go on Twitter real quick just to make sure so nothing happens. Unprepared. I'm sorry. Uh, dude. Don't even start. Don't even start. <laughs> well, I need to. I need to get like the exact name down because I want to misread it. So, um, well, hey, you want to hear a joke, Darian? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, too bad. There is still no roadmap for Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> there is still no roadmap. Oh my god, I did, guys. I'm actually almost done with this game. I, like I'm, dude. I'm. I'm. All, I'm. No, Jay, I'm almost seriously done with this game. It's anyway. getting to the point where I'm t- uh, tired of it. I don't know. I'm, I didn't I'm, even like Spider Man. I know you enjoyed Spider Man a little bit. But I, 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 I thought that was. I, I, I was lying to myself. <laughs> I was lying so hard. I was like, oh, no, it's good. Uh, it's okay. Hey, but dude, uh, yeah, Spider Man's like okay at best. Yeah, I'd rather uh, play as Kate Bishop. But here's the thing. But, well, speaking of Kate Bishop, and oh, this is, you know, if you want a little pro, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The skin. They <laughs> have, say, released, what are you say? They have released her, her Hawkeye series outfit, you know, once she gets in the final episode on, you know, from Disney Now, Plus that's a good game. skin. I it like is that. A good skin. It's probably my favorite skin of hers, if not I, yes. the... Um, I will... Rock if not the last one to get in the challenge card. <laughs> It is a good skin. It's a good skin. Agreed. 
Um, Fortnite. I think it's the first time we talked about Fortnite on here. No, it's like- um, even though Fortnite was doing some Marvel stuff while we were on we here. Talk, we talked about uh, Carnage showing it. Did we really? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we got a couple of Fortnite. Fortnite did the same thing, but with both Kate and uh, Clint. Yeah. So both, both from the show. Uh, some people cool. think, yeah, they both look good. So, uh, you know, if you want to get that, go. Um, and Green Goblin apparently is coming out in that game soon. Oh, don't even tell me. No, I know. I've seen it. Um, I, I was, I was wondering if we could even say it or not. But yes, I've seen what Green Goblin looks like, and it is pretty cool. Comic book Green Goblin, not the MCU yes. Raimi Goblin. No, yeah, this is comic book Green Goblin. Um, I've also seen. Uh, I, I I heard there's another villain supposed to come in. Yeah, I keep hearing. Uh, you know, hearing little things about uh, Electro. I just and, wish uh, Dr. Octopus was sure. Apparently, there's another Spider Man character. Um, so I'm guessing another Spider Man. So I'm guessing a Miles skin. Maybe. And so I am very, very excited. And that's pretty oh, yeah. much all I can do. Yeah. All right. I mean, I that's all I got. Gaming. I was going to say for gaming today, uh, hey, we did a live stream, but. Uh, nope. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do a live stream on Thursday. Hopefully it works. It should. I'm going to try it on a PS4 this time because I know how to work mm. that. But um, yeah, that's all I got to talk about. That's all you got to talk about? Yep, that's all I got. All righty. So that was episode 27 of the Comic Book Burrito, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a number. Uh-huh. It's a number. Um. Got a little thing coming in episode 50 that's kind of fun, but that's the way it weighs off. Um, yeah, we got an extra beef coming out tomorrow. Uh, we're not quite sure on what yet, I don't think. We, we, we talked for a minute about Batman doing, doing a show. We'd have to start that uh, next week, next week, if we did that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. You are right about that. Yeah. So, yeah, extra beef this week. We're going to be able to talk. We'll figure it out. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, that's all I can really think about, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, if you have any questions, comments, corrections, or concerns, you can contact me on Instagram at DarienH4404. That's D A R I E N H 4404. Or on Twitter at the CB Burrito. That's capital C, capital B, capital B, and burrito. Or on Facebook at the comic book burrito colon official page. Very interactive over there. We'll talk to you all the time, making tons of posts because it's quick and easy. Twitter, mm-hmm. sometimes not as much, we're more just like retweet stuff well, and reply to people's stuff and all those things like that. We got, we, I mean, hey, we, we, we shout out Valiant. That worked. Uh, great we did. We us, did so. shout out Valiant. They were, yes. we were supposed to get Greg Katzman, the director of marketing at Valiant Comics. On to the podcast to talk about the new Shadow Man issue for Valiant, but um, unfortunately we couldn't do it. So, but they were nice enough to send us an early copy of Shadow Man issue five, which we had a week uh, previously, and we read that. And um, I'll put out a little review of it. Um, we might get Spillman on here actually in a week or two to talk about Shadow Man. Yeah, he said he would like to do that, and we're down for it. So. Um, Greg, yeah. uh, want to let you know we love you. We, yeah, but we also uh, you can come on here too. We can get you on here and Spillman. Yes, that would be cool. That's uh, only if the Greg thing does not work out. Yes. But all right, uh, that's yeah. I think that's pretty much everything there. Uh, Patreon, I haven't worked on it since last week, but I will be back to doing that soon. Yes. And and yeah, uh, that's all I can talk about. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you start saying that at the end of all these. Mm-hmm. Subscribe, like, comment, do whatever. Hit that little bell beside the um, subscribe thing there. Get dinger. <laughs> give us, give us a little, give us a little dinger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's all I got to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing I else to say. So yeah, right. I guess just you know, follow me on all social medias at spider underscore land, and that's it. Yeah. There you go. And. That'll be it for this week, everybody. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye, guys. See y'all. Excelsior.